Hey guys, Tarantula Sam here, and welcome to my channel. About spiders, not about worms. Um, this will hopefully be spider food though here in a minute. Um, I actually, for this video, wanted to talk about this girl right here. So this is my pet black widow. She is a western black widow, uh, the Latrodectus hesperus, and these can be found all over the western United States. Um, I am from the northeastern area of Utah, and uh, these are all over from where I live. I actually caught her out in front of my house. And uh, I do notice when I'm out at night, uh, and if I'm looking, that I can find these all over the place where I live. Uh, they're very common, uh, probably to the horror if they knew all the parents of children uh, in my neighborhood. Um, but uh, it's kind of something I wanted to address here is uh, kind of the reason for that horror that people have. Um, I think these spiders get... Uh, uh, a bad rap. Uh, of course they get a bad rap. Um, uh, their uh, bite is venomous, uh, as are all spiders, but their venom is quite uh, quite toxic and could make you quite sick. Um, so they are to be taken seriously and not to be messed around with. Uh, I have seen people handling these and whatnot, but uh, it's not worth the risk. Uh, I don't know who has time to risk a bite from one of these. Um, I personally have things to do in the morning and uh, don't have time to be dealing with a bite from one of these spiders. However, um, if left alone, they are quite docile. Um, they do have a number of defense mechanisms and they, and they don't seem to uh, readily bite. Uh, it is different if uh, the maternal instincts of a mother protecting an egg sac are there. I think you're, the likelihood of getting bitten is much, much greater. However, they do have a, a number of other uh, defense mechanisms that they will use. Um, I did have her uh, out just on the floor one night um, when uh, I was getting her uh, put in this box, actually. And uh, she showed me at least three of those four defense mechanisms. Um, one being that they will play dead. Um, they'll curl their legs under and hold still, play dead. Two, they'll try and run away, which they're, they're quick in their webs, uh, but they are terribly awkward walking outside their webs and they kind of stumble around on those really long front legs, as you can see how long those front legs are. Um, and uh, their third defense mechanism they kind of use is they'll take that back leg and they will kick silk uh, in the direction of uh, the threat. And so she did do that to me, but I never got any sort of uh, threat display out of her uh, to uh, the, uh, show that she was uh, ready to bite. Um, so uh, those are the, the kind of the defense mechanisms that uh, they'll display. Um, she does, of course, have that uh, iconic um, red hourglass on her underside of her abdomen there. Um, showing that uh, she does have the potential to uh, inflict a uh, painful venomous bite. Um, as far as keeping her as a pet, she doesn't do much. She just kind of hangs upside down. Um, uh, but they are kind of interesting to observe. They'll spin those really messy cobwebs. It's kind of hard to uh, show you that in... Uh, uh, in this video because uh, the web is so fine that the camera is not going to pick it up. I'd need a better camera. Um, maybe when I take the lid off in a minute you'll be able to see it a bit better. Um, but yeah, their, their care requirements are very simple. Um, they're extremely hardy animals. They live in the desert. They don't need to eat very often. I feed her uh, maybe twice a month. Uh, and I don't really provide her with water. Every once in a while I'll spray a, a little bit on the side of the enclosure. I have never seen her go to drink it or anything. She mostly just hangs out in this one spot um, unless there's a prey item that falls uh, in, in there and then she'll go to get it. Anyways, um, this box that I have her in is just uh, one of these uh, um, boxes you can get at the container store. They're real cheap. They're like $3.50. Um, and this one happened to work uh, just great. I don't know the exact dimensions on it, but it's the largest one of this style they sell. Um, and with the taller lid here, uh, she kind of decided just to stop building her web right at that lid, lid line. So that's nice. 
that uh, she didn't get up in the, the lid and web that all up. It makes it much easier on me to uh, open it up and feed her. Um, I do have her on just a white sand, and I do that uh, just since she is um, a more toxic uh, spider than uh, a lot of my others. Uh, so I, it makes it real easy to see her, the black on the white. She's always standing out. Um, but uh, yeah, those are just kind of the basic care requirements uh, of her. Uh, for those of you who are strange enough like me to actually want to uh, keep one of these around in your house, most people are trying to get rid of these in their house. But anyways, now I am going to actually switch over and attempt to feed her for you and uh, see if she will eat. I did feed her somewhat recently. As you can tell, she's well fed. So I don't know if she will eat, but uh, they usually are pretty uh, opportunistic when it comes to uh, availability of something to eat. Uh, and I just have a small mealworm here, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab that and then switch over the camera and uh, see if she'll eat for you guys. All right, so I've got our poor little mealworm here. If I can get it, and there can be pretty tricky. And, oh, she seems to know the lid is off. Let's see if I can give this to her. Okay, oh, there you go. So they usually, when they go for the prey, they will reach with their back legs um, towards the uh, prey item um, and kind of keep their body away from it and they'll wrap them in silk um, and then they'll kind of sneak in every once in a while and, uh, and bite and then kind of back off. Um, and uh, I think they do this just uh, for their own safety. They don't want to be overpowered by a prey item. So they make sure that they're well disabled with silk before they actually try to uh, eat. Anyways, you can see her kind of working here. Um, I think she's still trying to figure out how to get silk on her. Her web is kind of thick and she's under it and it's above it. Sometimes she'll break her way through and come over onto the top so she can grab it better. But... Here she is working. This is pretty much the only time that uh, I see her moving, honestly. She just hangs upside down and does nothing unless you're feeding her. And then she's quite interesting to watch, I think. As you can see there, she's kind of wrapping. And then I think she did just go in and, yeah, bite right there. So I don't know if she'll take it from there or if she'll go back to wrapping silk. She usually... Uh, goes back and unwraps it again and again and takes her time. She's pretty methodical about it. Anyways, the, the other thing in this box that I didn't really talk about that I might as well talk about while we're here watching her is uh, these are actually the sticks I use are just kind of some broken pieces of tumbleweed that blow up on my back porch that I put in there for anchors for her to spin her web around and I threw in a few rocks at the bottom just because absolutely unnecessary. It's just she seems to uh, think that it's a trash for the uh, extra food items that I haven't taken out of there. Gross. Anyways, so I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, if uh, you like these kind of videos about spiders and whatnot, uh, um, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I did just upload a video about me trying to increase my frequency. YouTube is... Um, threatening to pull my partnership, so uh, I am going to try and upload a little bit more frequently. But anyways, I uh, guess we can watch her for a little bit here longer, but I uh, thank you guys uh, that subscribe, and uh, thank you for watching my video.